Creationists often proclaim that evolution is mathematically impossible. However, instead of trying to prove that evolution is impossible, their articles just stick to evolution being mathematically improbable. Take this article from the Institute for Creation Research titled The Mathematical Impossibility of Evolution. It is, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, a complete pile of garbage supported entirely by lies, misrepresentations, and general absurdity. There is a fantastic rebuttal of it titled The Mathematical Impossibility of Evolution Debunked. Link in the description below. The reality of evolution is, as with everything, quite the opposite of what creationists say. Evolution isn't mathematically impossible or even improbable. Evolution is actually inevitable. All organisms have mutation rates, that is, there is an approximate rate at which mutations occur in organisms per generation. For humans, there is one mutation in about every 100 billion nucleotides per generation, which may not sound like a lot. However, according to Jeff Slosh from the National Human Genome Research Institute, there are about 6 billion nucleotides per cell, and there are approximately 37.2 trillion cells. So, there should be about one mutation per every 17 cells if we round up. That means about 2.19 trillion cells in your body are mutated, which is about 17% of all your cells. At this point, you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot. But really, it's completely beside the point. The issue isn't whether or not your somatic or body cells are mutated, but whether your gametes are mutated. The point of this was just to show the regularity at which mutations occur. Where mutations are really important is the gamete cells which carry the genes that will be passed on to the next generation. Remember that alleles are versions of a gene. There might be one gene for eye color, but the allele might code for brown, blue, or green. Also, two terms we must understand are homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous means that you inherited the same two versions of a gene from your parents, and heterozygous means you inherited two different versions. In simple Mendelian genetics, when is anything ever simple, a person who is heterozygous for brown eyes received one allele for brown eyes from one parent and one allele for, say, blue eyes, from another parent. The brown color is dominant, meaning that it takes phenotypic precedence, while the blue color is recessive, meaning that it doesn't take precedence. In this example, wherever there's a capital B, brown eyes result. Then, we can see that the offspring have a 75% chance of inheriting brown eyes and only a 25% chance of inheriting blue eyes. If both parents are homozygous for brown eyes, then brown eyes will inevitably result. If both are homozygous for blue, then blue results. This seems simple enough on the surface, but it begins to get hard at two genes, going from four squares to 16. At three genes, we're already dealing with 64 squares. In reality, we have thousands of genes, so Punnett squares aren't going to work for very long. They help you understand, though, the concepts of dominant, recessive, homozygous, and heterozygous, which brings us to what will be the focus of the rest of the video, Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The first of the Hardy-Weinberg equations is P plus Q equals 1, where P is the dominant allele and Q is the recessive allele. Using the equation, we're just looking at one gene. For one generation, if the frequency of a dominant allele is 0.96, then the frequency of the recessive allele should be 0.04. If we multiply P plus Q by itself, then we get P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1, which is our second Hardy-Weinberg equation. Again, P is the dominant allele and Q is the recessive allele. However, this time, P squared represents the portion of the population that is homozygous for the dominant allele, 2PQ is the portion that is heterozygous, and Q squared is the portion that is homozygous for the recessive allele. Using the same numbers, 0.96 for dominant and 0.04 for recessive, we find that the portion that is homozygous dominant is 0.9216, or 92.16% of the population. The portion that is heterozygous is 0.0768, or 7.68%. And the portion that is homozygous recessive is 0.0016 or 0.16%. In this way, the Hardy-Weinberg equations represent a snapshot of a population's genetics. This snapshot, however, can't be maintained or can't be in equilibrium because to do that would require meeting several parameters. The organisms must comprise a very large population, there's no gene flow or genetic drift, no mutations, only random mating, and no selection. Meeting all of these criteria is not naturally possible because, for one, mutations are always going to occur. Natural selection is also going to always occur in nature. Therefore, the allele frequencies of a population are going to vary from generation to generation or over time, which is the very definition of evolution. In essence, evolution is inevitable. It can't not happen. 
This puts to rest any arguments that evolution is mathematically impossible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.